Do you have concerns about the COVID-19 vaccine? Yes! Is it because there's been a history of the medical field lying to black people and exploiting us for our bodies? Yes! But are you also tired of seeing folks in our community die from the virus as well? Yes! Then you've come to the right place as we explore if black people should get the COVID vaccine or not. Oh my gosh, that's amazing! That's right, that is amazing. Stay tuned to find out more as we explore through this video and don't forget to like, share the video, and subscribe to my channel. Amazing! Where's that rockin' intro of yours? Right here. Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome black. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing good. We're going to get right into this video on should black folks get the COVID vaccine. Now, one thing I want to start us off with is the fact that probably this time last year or so, I am not gonna lie, I was definitely one of those people who thought black people could not get COVID. <laughs> and, you know, drop in the comments how you're feeling because I definitely knew that was a thing. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people also felt like that was a thing. And then of course we see not only are black people, yes, getting COVID, unfortunately a lot of black communities are disproportionately impacted negatively by COVID. Whether it's folks getting COVID and when folks, black folks get COVID, the kind of treatment they may or may not receive if they go to the hospital to try to get treated we also know some statistics where it came to doctors not really choosing or wanting to you know give the right you know um, medicine or various things like that to black patients uh, in relation to white counterparts or white counterparts who have a lot of money so you know it's just really good to just kind of set the tone as we get into the historical context and we go into some very unfortunate reasons why some folks may not feel some black folks may not feel absolutely comfortable with getting the vaccine because the medical system in the past has 100% and continues today honestly to not only exploit black people but to essentially let black people down when it comes to you know black women and pregnancy rates and various things like this that I'm going to get into. So I think when a lot of people think of maybe a time when the medical system was absolutely unjustified in the treatment of black folks a lot of people think of the Tuskegee study or the Tuskegee experiment. Now, I actually did a video on mental health within the black community. I'm going to be kind of referencing this video a lot very often through this throughout this video because that historical context, I really kind of break down why some black folks may not feel comfortable seeking out um, medical help or, you know, when it comes to like mental illness or therapy and things like this. And I go a lot more in depth when it comes to the, the, the Tuskegee experiment. So if you want more information, about that definitely check out this video but a brief overview is just the fact that the Tuskegee experiment happened between 1932 and 1972 by the United States Public Health Service and the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. The purpose of this study was to observe the natural history of untreated syphilis. Essentially there were some black folks who had syphilis and they were they were told that they were going to get a treatment for syphilis but really the researchers were like no nah, we're not going to treat them we want to study how syphilis progresses over time and they were lied to and they essentially let a bunch of black people die and just kind of study them and die slowly and very painfully just in the name of science so again if you want like a more in-depth version of this or you know explanation of this check out my video on mental health in the black community so this is just one big example of why a lot of people will feel like well remember the Tuskegee study you know that is very real and a lot for a lot of people they might have felt like well yeah my grandfather you know was a victim of the Tuskegee study or you know something like that because it wasn't that long ago now something else I really want to talk about that I haven't talked about before and I was like okay let me have this point for this channel is Henrietta Lacks so some of you may have learned, heard about the HeLa cells, learned about this maybe in high school, maybe not, maybe in college. I didn't really learn about it myself until I college. There's a popular book about her life out. Um, I didn't read it, but I know it's a good book, so definitely recommend it. So um, Henrietta Lacks was 31 years old, and in about 1951, 
she was admitted to john hopkins hospital because she had cervical cancer now unfortunately her cancer was very aggressive and and in about a year she unfortunately died from the cancer so after henrietta lax died the scientists and medical experts or whatever at the time who were kind of treating her and knew about her condition went in and essentially re received the cells okay now i'm gonna let y'all know i'm not a science buff okay Okay. The cells from her cervix were brought in and cultured in a part of the first human living cell line. So literally to this day, Henrietta Lacks' cells are still being used and she's known and her cells are known, HeLa cells are known to be like the mother of medicine. Her cells have been have gone on to help scientists like understand cancer, understand the progression of cancer, help fight against cancer for patients and like I said are still being used today. And this woman was admitted to the hospital in 1951. So the thing is, is that, you know, she's known as the mother of medicine. Her cells have gone on to help a lot of people. But the fact of the matter is, is that Henrietta Lacks did not consent to this. Yes, she's probably happy, you know, where, you know, in heaven or whatever. She's probably very happy that she's been able to help a lot of people, but it's still just like, she didn't know that this was going to be her legacy and she didn't necessarily say hey it's okay for y'all to you know dig up my cells and you know use them in this way in addition think about her life like she was diagnosed when she was 31 she was probably living her life turning up you know just doing whatever had kids and then she dies and like that's it but imagine if she was able to get some kind of monetary compensation for you know the all of that her cells would do and of course there's no way to know that like that's going to be her case but still it just feels like dang like yes i'm so happy this black woman's cells have been able to you know get used in this way and help a lot of people but it still just feels like well dang like Think about her life just think about like what she had to go through and how her life kind of came to such an abrupt end but how it just like her cells or something that someone just went and got just helped all these people so you know it's just something to kind of think about when we think about exploitation black women's bodies as we kind of continue through the historical context but shout out to henrietta lax her great grandchildren now are actually doing a lot of really great work in her name they're doing a lot to keep her name alive they host lectures they um, offer grants to community-based um, organizations that are you know about bringing awareness to you know various things in the medical industry and various things like that and also helping to provide scholarships for high school students interested in medicine so again you know I'm glad that they are really helping and really you know trying to keep her legacy alive and you know be like yes like this was a an immaculate woman and you know everyone needs to know about that so yes that's really great information so yeah so that's I guess a silver lining but it's just it, it, it when you think about it it's just like dang now something I want to lastly bring up when we're on the conversation of black women is the fact that black women are three times more likely to die during pregnancy than you know their counterparts in general. Now this is important to bring up. Obviously there is um, an issue of forced sterilization. Again, I talk about that in this video right here when it comes to black people and mental health and maybe another reason why folks may not want to trust the medical industry. So again, if you want more information about that, check out this video. But I just wanted to bring this up because again, this is something that is still very much real very much happening within the US all over but very apparent within the US and one of the big reasons is because there is this terrible stereotype and I think a lot of people would feel like oh well the black woman strong stereotype is like a good thing but it's like not really because what that translates to a lot of doctors is that black women can take more pain black women are stronger so when they tell me hey my stomach kind of hurts I just gave birth the doctors might be like eh, it's fine just take an aspirin when it might be an actual really big deal or something like this let me know if you want a video on this I feel like I could talk about this for a long time but maybe how you know the black woman strong stereotype is problematic or how there's a history of doctors not really listening to black women because of the stereotype again I kind of talk about it in this video but yes I just wanted to really bring that up because I think that's another reason why some folks might not even feel comfortable with you know trusting a doctor and I will say side note there are a lot of you know black women or just people in general who are now starting to think about okay what about a home birth what about you know various things like that and maybe just the stress of not feeling like 
well, you know, the doctor may not listen to me or having a doula or a midwife or various things like that. So I wanted to bring that in. Let me know if you want a video on that too, because I think that's a really cool um, topic and something that's really interesting. I wanted to touch on that historical context as well. Black women, unfortunately, dying when it comes to trusting doctors to deliver their babies safely. Now, we went over some highlights when it comes to the historical context. Now we're going to get into what the problem is, what, you know, what is it, why some black folks are like, eh, about the vaccine, obviously because of the medical field, but maybe some other things as well. So off the bat, we just kind of talked about it, but there might be a lot of folks who just genuinely do not trust the medical care system. Now, of course, we can talk about these historical contexts as like these very real things, but for some people, like, it's like in my life you know someone like i said earlier could be like my grandfather or my great grandfather was a part of the syphilis you know the tuskegee experiment someone could be like yeah a friend of mine who gave birth had a really horrible time because the doctor didn't believe when she you know was said she was in pain or something like that or any kind of thing and i feel like a lot of people a lot of black people might feel like yeah like i know about some people who've had terrible experiences or i've had a terrible experience when it comes to medical medical people actually listening to me actually giving me something that actually worked or they just wanted to kind of like make me spend money because there is that aspect as well so I definitely think that is one big problem that a lot of people have just not really trusting the medical industry medical field and I think that the medical field needs to be very much responsible and be like yeah like I, I acknowledge that like I think they need doctors we need to really acknowledge this um, and and there are studies that show that a lot of people black people feel more comfortable when they have black doctors and a lot of you know there's a lot more success rates for pregnancies and for feeling better when you have like a black doctor so I think we also need to advocate for that as well so yeah that's one reason I know a lot of people have a big problem with potentially not getting the vaccine or getting it now another reason which I think you know we all can do better but I do think that there are some folks who are not willing to do the research when it comes to the vaccine. So I will say, I feel like even me, I've heard a lot of like stories. Like it could be like, I got the vaccine and this happened or I, you know, the, don't get this one, get this one or whatever, whatever. And I would just say, I think there's a lot of people who aren't really like doing the research and really understanding for themselves how they feel about the vaccine and are kind of just kind of being told through the grapevine or my cousin had this experience or my friend's friend's brother you know sprouted a tail after the vaccine <laughs> something you know so i just think that there is a lot of like lack of research um being done but also just kind of like a bad story kind of being passed around and someone being like well i'm gonna take that story as gospel i'm gonna take that story as bible and you know i'm not gonna do it and the last problem i want to acknowledge which is a problem within itself honestly you know and you know not to judge whatever you think comment below let me know what you think but there are some people and you know i can attest to this i definitely have met some people like this there are some people who do not think covid is real and i don't understand it i personally don't understand it but there are some people that are like well people are getting sick but it's not covid it's something else or i just don't really believe that i don't really believe that all these people are dying because of it i don't really believe that whatever i, I think covid or maybe it's real but maybe it was introduced by the government whatever whatever which you know we, you know the government has done some shady stuff so I could understand that but I just think that you know there's a lot of people who might feel like COVID isn't real so if COVID is not real then the vaccine probably isn't real either or maybe the vaccine is a way for them to do something track us or you know whatever I'm not sure so I do think that is a sentiment I think a lot of people have had in not really believing the severity of COVID or you know acknowledging that people are dying but being like hmm, maybe that's just the flu maybe it's something else all right, so something I want to acknowledge for my good people out there. I want to be a resource. <laughs> I want to be, I want to help y'all. So I will say I did get the vaccine. All right, so if I, I have gotten the vaccine, I got the Pfizer vaccine about two weeks ago. And honestly, I got it because I felt like at some point, for me personally, I felt like 
at some point everyone was going to need to get the vaccine i felt like at some point that they might start monitoring or saying well if you want to get on a plane or if you want to go into work or if you want to you know do all these things you're gonna have to have proven that you got the vaccine and i was kind of like i'd rather just get it now than get trying to get it later or you know i just felt like it was kind of inevitable again that's just me um, and another reason I got it is because there have been people in my family on my dad's side specifically who have died from COVID like and it's really sad and it's really scary and there's just been people in my life who I know have like you know had it and maybe they recovered or maybe they did not. Um, so for me, I just felt like COVID was very real and I felt like it was important to get the vaccine. Um, and again, I have the feeling that everyone's going to have to get it at some point. So I might as well just get it now. Now, you know, please comment below or just make sure you stay tuned. You know, if I start, you know, turning blue or, you know, <laughs> I don't know please let me know you know so i can i can if you're not sure just let me be a test dummy for you you know i felt fine after i got the shot um my arm was sore where i got the shot but that was literally it i don't think i had any side effects again i've just gotten the first shot i know after the second shot apparently like you might get sick or something like that so we will see and i will keep you all updated but yeah so i just wanted to let you all know if you were a little hesitant you know just know your girl right here we're right here here, you know I got it I'm okay uh, but of, of course everyone reacts differently but yeah so last but not least we're gonna get into some tips tips to consider when thinking about if you should get the vaccine if you feel what's your opinion on black people getting the vaccine in general so tip number one Tip number one is do your research. There's this stigma that like this uh, virus just kind of came out of the blue when actual when in actuality viruses and you know like specific strains of virus are kind of added on to like a virus. I believe um, I believe I did my research and I think this is what I got from it. So you know the virus isn't like some brand spanking new thing that they kind of brought out. There has been a virus that's been perfected for years and they added the COVID the strain that would help fight against covid like as of recently but all that to say this isn't necessarily a shot that just came out of the blue and dropped from the sky and people are like okay like this is something that you know scientists have been kind of working on but again do your own research you know make sure the, the sources are credible because there's going to be a lot of information out there people that's just going to say you know all these you know things so make sure the source the sources are credible but yeah do your own research try not to base anything off of just opinions that people had or you know things like that try to base it in facts just so that you're correctly informed um and because you never know someone you could someone could say something and you're like okay they're right and you find out actually they weren't right actually they made it up or actually they based that off of someone else's opinion so yeah tip number one just do your research tip number two don't influence others <laughs> i say you know live your truth live your life whatever you want to do with this vaccine you do it you know if you feel like no i'm not gonna do it don't try to get other people to also not do it and even if you feel like like i just want to share my experience to let you know but even if you feel like everyone should get it you know just let people know who also maybe are similar minded to you like okay yeah we're all getting it you know but i just say try not to influence others you know because you you know you don't want to push any kind of agenda on everyone obviously everyone had a very different kind of 2020 and had different you know experiences with you know pandemic and being inside or whatever so i just think you know whatever it is just don't don't push it on others everyone has their own life to live you have your own life to live and your opinion is valid of course um but yeah just try not to like influence others or push agendas onto others i would say and final tip number three stay safe stay safe whatever you're gonna do stay safe if you do not get this vaccine keep your mask on stay inside continue to socially distance please 
please, 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 you know, come on. And if you have gotten vaccine, just make sure you're taking the proper precautions for yourself and making sure you're staying informed. I know for, at least for the Pfizer, I believe, it doesn't really kick in until about like two weeks after you've had each shot. So even if you've gotten the second shot, don't be like, hey, you know, I'm going to, you know, a party or whatever, no mask. It'll be like, okay, at least wait a good two weeks, but also continue to wear masks. Um, there's a lot of information about out there about, you know, vaccinated folks and how they should wear masks in regards to hanging out with certain kind of folks versus folks who have not gotten the vaccine and various things like this. So just stay safe, stay safe. You know, we are almost out of here, almost out of, you know, the, the, the trauma, the torture that was 2020 slash COVID-19 pandemic, you know, various things like that. So just please continue to stay safe, protect your loved ones. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. I hope you learned something. Comment below what you think. Do you think black people should get the vaccine? Um, how do you feel? Have you gotten the vaccine? Have you had any side effects? Have you, how have you feel? Do you feel better? Do you feel worse? Just let me know whatever it is. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and share this video please and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to be notified whenever I post. I post every other Sunday so on Sundays look out for your girl Aziza because we are out here. So thank you so much and I will see you soon.